Radio, six minutes after eight o'clock. So funny, we're talking about Al having his own fan club, which we just absolutely love. I was a member of the Huckleberry Hound fan club when I was in third grade. I remember that. In the back, it was the back of a box. It was Huck Hound. I still have Huckleberry the Hound. Yeah, man. He had his own. We're dating ourselves. Now. <laughs> yeah, really? Listen, and so he you had, tell me heckle and, and jackal. And he had the little button, and I was so. And I actually got it from the back of a cereal box in 1950 something, I guess. But had I, if Al Gatulo was there, I would have the Al. I'd be a member of the Al Gatulo club. You know, it's funny. Arthur, a, 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 Joe Piscopo sitting here with a list of of questions or whatever. I got my own list. Jeff. I never All right. Did that. All right. I got my own list. Uh -oh. Number one, Al, I saw the dent on your yeah. car this morning. It's the front. It's the front left uh, quarter yeah, panel. It's been there for years. Yeah, it's because when people make that turn, right? They, they make the turn on Broadway. Can you do so. something about it, Council? Well, I mean, Who I, I, look, I got sue? IGG. I got a guy. You know, you come to me. You come to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, Frank's got his uncle. Give me a week. I fix the car. You know, we got this, Our... we got Enzo, Dominic, and Final Touch Collision on 65th and 7th. <laughs> you know, like hey, yo, I got Plugs a guy. On oh, the air. Plugs on no, the so air. Joe, here's the deal. Last Brent, week, hold on, stay with me, Arthur Idella. Frankie, your car's okay. Well, no, I mean it's being repaired. But you, you, you didn't call Arthur at the, at the guy. Well, no, I take it to my uncle. He's on. Right, right, right. He's got to spend money. You got to spend money. Way, Arthur, blood is thicker than water. Nice so. suit. What does he do? Don't, don't mention the company because they will not advertise. I'm not going to advertise. Okay. Same company downstairs. You went to the, <laughs> and you go. Oh, this looks like a custom made suit. And I walk in, and the first thing you do, Arthur opens it up. I think he's going to have like the in inside lining, like I have a Garmani. No, it says the name of the store downstairs. Listen, two ninety nine. Joe, yeah? I am not big with spending a ton of money no. on clothes. Yeah, I'm blessed. Me too. I'm me a forty four regular. I go in, and basically they just hem yeah, the bottom yeah. of the pants. There. I get stopped outside of the courthouse Great last suit. week by a young, very handsome young man, very well dressed. Like, sir, that's an unbelievable suit. I want to be a custom tailor. I work for Joe. Ba, 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 ba. It's like a well-known custom guy. He goes, who made that? And I showed him the same <laughs> label, which is, you know, on Tuesdays, buy one, get yeah, one yeah, free yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. This guy was like, there's no way. Ba, ba. So he sends me this email, and he's like, you got to have custom suits. I go, son. If I have to have custom-made suits, then why are you stopping me on the yeah, street? Yeah, of yeah. all the hundreds of lawyers running yeah, around the courthouse, yeah, yeah, you stopped yeah, me. So obviously, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have to have anything. You last love, weekend, love I go, the way you look. Last weekend, Joe, this yeah. is all about you, Joe, yeah. your favorite uh, topic. Uh -oh. you. No. Yeah, so last right. weekend, yeah, right. I'm, I go to Saratoga with uh, actually a bunch of Katsimatidis friends. Uh, Paul Carlucci, the former publisher of The Post, Ned Curtis. Dropping some names. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, it's, well, it's like a, it's like a yeah. oh, your buddy Keith Ablo. Where, where were you now? In Saratoga, Saratoga. Okay. But it's 95 degrees in the shade. They yeah. cancel the races because it's, it's, it's unfit for the horses. So I'm strolling around uh, Saratoga. There's a gorgeous bookstore. I go into the bookstore. Actually, I read some about a half an hour of a Trump book. You know, it's a smear job kind of book, but it was interesting. It held my attention. As I'm walking out, I see a cover of a thick, thick book, live from New York. Mm. And it's the, the Chronicles Tom Shales. of Saturday Night Live. Shales wrote that, right? Is that right? I believe so. But, of course, you know, I just go right to the index. I oh. look for my boy Joe Piscopo, oh, right? I start man, reading now. And, I, and I'm, I'm assuming this is true, and I'm assuming you're proud of this. There were certain skits that they wanted you to do yeah. regarding Frank Sinatra, yeah. and you refused to do them. That is true. Because you said, it was the old man, yeah. right, it I'm was not going to do that. The old man would never do that. Yeah. The old man would never act that yeah. way. Yeah. The old man would never say those yeah. things. Yeah. And yeah. That, you so, so you get a moniker kind of, oh, it's, you're difficult, but I didn't care because I didn't want to offend Frank Sinatra. It was my, I had that legacy in my hand to a group of all of a new generation. young generation and I wouldn't do it you know so that, that that's true the, re the rest of the book was not really accurate accurate but out of all the books well they kind of make you and Eddie Murphy sound like the heroes of, of the, the no, mid 80s no it's the true the book I, I take that back it was one of the best, <laughs> best books they really do written. I mean they said you know Eddie was, was the lead and you were his support team and the two of you guys working <laughs> together <laughs> yeah I was bored he's no, bored, no, he's bored with no, me no it's fan club oriented Anything, it was, any fan no, it club. Was. Yeah, it was. It was fan club oriented. Yeah, he's going to tweet a fan club. No, I'll tell you, the Shales book is good. You stop on a hot summer day. And That's actually not written by what, Tom Shales. The, what, what, that book's not that? Which one is that? Yeah, uh, well, I'm not sure what the Shales book is, but that book is what the basis for The Method to the Madness, uh, the Trump book, was about. It's basically just interviews with all the Saturday Night Live yes, producers that's, and cast members. Oh, yes, so, that is and that's the new Trump book, The Method to the Madness. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was based on, yeah. Live oh, from New York. And it's a great book. It's just a collection. 
collection of interviews with you, with uh, you know o- all the cast members, Jimmy all the Belushi. producers, all the writers. Wow, wow, everybody wow. That's Aykroyd. Ever been on the show. I don't. You, uh, know, you would love. I mean, you would. Uh, you'd probably just sit there and spend eight hours and read the whole. No, thing. it's wonderful. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. The book, uh, in my opinion, hasn't been written. I don't think it ever will be because the all the inside stuff that went on. I don't talk about it. I don't believe in writing about it. All the thing when you. Well, sit, they interviewed you. I mean, you're quoted yeah, yeah. a couple of times in the and, book, and, and they don't make you seem difficult. They actually no, no, complimented no, no. you or remarked about the ownership you took over the Frank Sinatra character yeah, and yeah. how you wouldn't let it be That was uh, the one dirty thing. Go. But I was a, I'm a team player, clearly. But that was the one thing that I stood up for, just the old man like that. And then, you know what? They let me write the sketch, which allowed me to get a Writer's Guild card. I was very proud to be part of the Writer's Guild to this day. So they we would write the sketches uh, for ourselves. So do you think today, oh, the serious question, do you think today with the politically correct society you could sing... I am black and no, you are white. No, you couldn't do it. I'm blind and bad and you. I have sight. What if you are blind and, and blind? And you, if you continue that song, I can't even talk about it. I'll be afraid to mention it on the radio. You can't. And, and you, you know how many people remember that skit yeah, to this that's day? It, that's it. Then they're young. And the YouTube uh, they bleeps that out. They bleep out certainly. You can't do it. And it's crazy. It's crazy. We're too politically correct right now. I watched too politically the other correct. night. Uh, Eddie Murphy popped up being on Johnny Carson yeah. right around then, 83, 84. Yeah, I mean, shot, yeah. it was, I'm in bed at 12 o'clock. I'm hysterically laughing, and I'm thinking he would be indicted. <laughs> he, today, so, for what he said, Arthur, he would be indicted. So what happens? Eddie's going doing a special on Netflix now. And I was talking to Neil Cavuto about this. What, what? Does, and I haven't talked to Ed about it. But what is he going to do? What can he do? What envelope can he push now without getting into trouble anymore? I, I don't think there's. I mean, look, he's. If you listen to his album Raw, just or do his it. First one, just go for it. He, no, I, I. He can't. He does a whole, all kinds of skits about homosexuals. I mean, he's always <laughs> and he's using all the slang about gay guys. I mean, it's it's. You double over laughing, but you're like. You could never say, and forget about Richard Pryor or Red Fox. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those exactly. guys were were brilliantly funny. But you don't think they could make it today? You know, legally, you probably couldn't get away with it. I right? think that I think there'd be protests in front of their house. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I mean, yeah. it would be nuts. Now, yeah. one more thing, Joe. Two, let's pass Tuesday night, and I know Al Gatul is really excited to see Brian Adams in two weeks. <laughs> On Tuesday night, <laughs> ten guys <laughs> took a van. We went down to Philly. Uh, we went to the, we got cheesesteaks. We went it. to the bar. You and did it. Seventy six year old <sighs> Keith Richards and seventy six year old Mick Jagger played twenty songs and they blew the roof you know, off of Lincoln Field. More? Blew the roof. I mean the whole floor was jumping up and down and dancing and screaming. Mick is running. You're looking at them on the screen. You're like, look at these old guys. And there's Mick running like crazy, singing. I don't know if he's got microphone, you know, uh, they're piping in music. But he's got like eight women singing behind him. He sounds fantastic. Well, I saw the video. Keith is unbelievable. I saw the video. It's, he, it's, he's not lip syncing. You can't no. lip sync. Charlie song. Watts, I think, is like 78. They could, be tra- they could be tracking him, though. Maybe. A I mean, wait, so tell me what so, that is. So, like, David Lee Roth, when he, did the re- when he went back to Van Halen, because he can't sing at that range anymore, they double and triple track him. So while he's singing, you're hearing also his recorded version of the song while he's singing, so to, mm. just to strengthen his voice. They were that good. It sounded like yeah. there may have been tricks. And then, and then um, for my 13th birthday, my parents got me tickets to see Frank Sinatra. I told you this. Yeah, that's great. So now this next Monday, August 5th, I'm taking Luca to see the Stones before You they... said that. That is great. Yeah. So so all I know about is you going to see the Stones. And, and, and I'm a Stones guy, but I would never go see them. But you told me how great they are, his age, and the fact that he has a three-year-old backstage. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, his daughter, the son, I guess it is. I, uh, don't, I don't know. But Mick, yeah, Mick Jagger's got a little kid, which I love about him. So then I'm everywhere I go now. People so now I was down the shore. A lot of Philly fans down there, and I, and I walked out of a place where I did some really silly. It was like an ice cream place. Hey Joe, we just saw you, man. I saw you, the, the Mick Jagger. He goes, man. I said, how old is Mick? And he's his sub- birthday was July 26. 70 what? 76. And there's hope. For and me. you, Joe, you would admire Charlie Watts because you're a great drummer. Oh, yeah. And I mean, he's up there. He plays 20 songs, yeah, and he amazing, is just man. Amazing. going crazy. And and for Frank Marano. Bruce Springsteen announced to La Repubblica uh, newspaper in Rome yeah. that they're cutting an album, him and the E Street Band, in the autumn, right. and that they're going to tour in 2020. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Al was telling and me that. And that he's going to definitely out. play in Rome. 70 and years old. 
Excuse me. Mick Jagger, 76, the president of the United States, 73 years old, not even breathing heavy, this guy. Think about Donald Trump. When you think about it, leaving the White House, that he's going off the, off the Rose Garden, he goes to the press on his way to Marine One, the wine of Marine One, and you hear him having to raise his voice, virtually start to yell just so he could be heard over the helicopter, and he answers two dozen questions. Where is he going? To speak in front of 20,000 people. Do you think it's this he guy, has all this stamina because he guy. doesn't drink alcohol? Yeah, yeah it's a great point because Bruce, is ne- Bruce isn't, was never a druggie. Springsteen was never a druggie. And neither I, is Trump. But Keith Richard, I can't figure that guy out. <laughs> well, he's been sober for like a year and a half. He's sober. He's I, have one, I have one is last question. Is he sober question. now? Keith Richard's yeah, sober Yeah, for now? like a year and a half. Yes. But, but to, your point, to your point, I really believe Bruce has a stamina. He does. And two of the guys I admire most stamina-wise are two politically opposite. Yeah, so, couldn't uh, be more. Right? You know, and, but Donald Trump, I don't think he was never a drug guy. No, he, never, he doesn't, doesn't drink. drink. And look at the stamina this guy has. I'll tell Obama you drank. It, did, did he? Did he? <laughs> yeah, oh, sure. Well, because George W. Bush didn't drink because he had an issue with alcohol. So if you Maybe. look at his inauguration, should have drunk. Everybody's drinking seltzer. And if you look at, at uh, Obama's inauguration and when they have the thing afterwards in the Capitol, there everyone has a, a uh, champagne glass. My last fact here on my. Well, on my, my list. Look how he prepares for his five Not look for any bit. of the subjects that we were hoping to <laughs> no. talk about. <laughs> Wait, but like, well, but Gattulo, I got out of time. I got Gattulo, him here. Gattulo, no, Gattulo, got as, as you know, none of us have like a tremendous amount of time, right? That's the biggest commodity we have. Mm. And you have to decide, you know, what, if you're going to read a book, what you're going to read. Right. Our brother in arms, Frank Morano, mm. he goes with Millard Fillmore. I know, Millard Fillmore. <laughs> I mean, on the village? village? Well, I haven't village? read it yet. I purchased it. I purchased it. Why would you like, even waste the money? Like, you start reading the page. Funny. We were talking You're about out. this yesterday. The Frankie, you went to a, a store or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in Long Beach Island. Yeah. It was the only place you could find parking next to the bookstore. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> Millard Fillmore. No one's there. gonna go to the book. Hey, right. I, I heard your, your your infomercial earlier from Rhino Shield. She ju- Susan just finished my house. Did you do it? Mike Mike Zach her guy her, guy, her installer. I mean, I it took a, it took a little longer than they had said. But he's literally out there with with a, a brush the size of a toothbrush. That type of detail oriented application. He did it. He didn't like the way it came out the primer the first time. He redid it. Really? Yeah. My wife changed the color of the house. Oh man! They, 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 unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back in ten years to talk about how it looks like the way it looked this weekend. And Susan came to my house this weekend. We had a little cocktail reception. She came. She showed off her fine work. That's great. And anyone that who's thinking great. about it, pull the trigger because you right will be shield. very, 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 very Thank happy. you, Arthur. And Susan's so nice to work with. All right, I so got to go. Got <laughs> Arthur, let me, let me ask you some legal questions okay. here before I'm, I I don't have you. court until 9 o'clock. You know, no. The, listen, uh, we see the Supreme Court. This is from Five Boroughs. A rule that the president can reappropriate that military money for the president's wall. Uh, did you expect that that was going to happen? No, um, because Justice Chief Justice Roberts is really going out of his way to not allow the Supreme Court to be political. And he's trying so hard with his own votes to vote with Justice Sotomayor and Justice Kagan uh, and, and Justice Ginsburg and Justice Breyer on the other side of the aisle because – this is his legacy. Like people know, the Rehnquist Court, the Warren Court. He's a young man. He's still a young man. He's already been there maybe fifteen years, thirteen years. He doesn't want his legacy to be. Oh, this was the most political court of all time. That the people were appointed Robert, by the Re- Chief Justice, right? The people appointed by Republicans are going to vote in you know, the conservative way, and the people who voted with the the Democrats appointed by Democratic yeah. presidents are going to be. So he's the he has become the Anthony Kennedy. He has become the swing vote. And our boy Justice Scalia, a boy who calls the Supreme Court justice a boy, but he was known. For you never knew which side of the the equation he was going to come out on yeah. because he read the Constitution as it was meant to be, not as you wanted it to be. Jeffrey Epstein, man, what happened with that? Did you get well, the inside line mm, on what happened? I, apparently, somebody d- d- wasn't too happy about his uh, pedophilia ways. I mean, look, that's that's not uncommon in prison. I mean, the only guys really nowadays who have problems in prison are people who are accused of sexual assault on little kids. And I mean that's you know that's what he's known for. And they look. They, he was in a, in a highly protected area, which is about five blocks yeah. from here. Yeah. You would think with all the cameras everywhere, he would be protected. I will tell you, someone who's a household name who went to prison recently and is now out, who I represented for a little while. I mean, he told me when he got to prison, they put him in the cell number one with a camera right on him to make sure nobody messed with him. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, and you would think that's what they would do with Epstein because it, it's a, it's a black eye. That wasn't manufactured. It's a black eye on the so. warden. No, yeah. it's a black eye on the wardens and, and all that. I mean, they're supposed to. Prote- I mean, it's America. It's not Turkey. Yeah. It's not a Turkish prison. That's the line from Airplane. Yeah. Remember that control the line from Airplane. <laughs> Hey, Scotty, you ever been to a Turkish prison? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was Turkish bathhouse. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not, well, I'm, sure, no, you'll, no, I'm okay. sure you'll Google it right after you read the Millard Fillmore intro. But <laughs> Did you, you know what? There's so much to talk to you about, Arthur. I, we got a- September 9th, John. Preparing for September 9th. We're starting a big case on September 9th right down the block in 100 Center Street. The people of the state of New York versus Harvey Weinstein. And then in February or March, I'm going to try the case of- uh, a woman by the last name of Roberts versus uh, Avi Dershowitz, who he's being sued for defamation because he she didn't like the way he defended himself against false charges. So this is an ongoing battle between her lawyer David going, Boyce and, I, look at Arthur, and Alan Dershowitz. And how many how many courts are you going to be in today? Okay. Three, three. Okay. We, we're going to uh, the yeah, Southern take, District of New York down so, the block. Then I got to go to Staten Island. But by the way, to thank, the Rock. Thank you for dropping in because I would be so like worried. You it, and Anthony Pope does the same thing. When do you compartmentalize? Oh, he's fantastic, Anthony. Pope. Do, do you do you figure this all out before like last night? Did you break it all down last yeah, night exactly? Yeah. And, and and in between those all those court appearances, I have like conference calls on different on other calls. Yeah, you have to. go go from but Joe you do it's almost like a, a live appearance yeah and, it, and it's almost like you go from playing the guitar yeah, 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 to playing yeah, the drums yeah, 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 yeah. to singing I yeah. mean those are all different skill sets yeah. and it's still the same way you act and you conduct yourself very differently in yeah. the federal court in the southern district of New York than you do in Supreme Court in Staten Island one's a mortgage fraud case one is a murder murder case it is, it's just you have to change gears, but that's what, luckily, God gave us those gifts. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I love it. I love the way your your, your mind works. In Joe, that. it's going to be 101 degrees today. You're wearing a navy blue suit. <laughs> that's I'm exactly just, right. just wondering. I mean, I guess you're going to be I just did it because Char- Charlie picked it out. Your All kid right. picks it out. No, 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 it's no. what. By the way, look at this. I, t- I was showing everybody. Look at the tie. Look what it says. See what I'm saying? I love you, Daddy. Loves Charlie. See, wow. And that, and that, that kid's got money. You know, Custom made <laughs> ties. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm sure it's somewhere, but uh, yeah. So she wanted me to wear this outfit, and I wore it. And you're right, in 110 degrees. Arthur Idell, I love you, man. Oh, the best. And, and I'm looking forward today, to buddy. Al's car getting fixed and Frank's car getting fixed, and and and, uh, and, and, and being one of the first new members of the new Al Gatulo fan club. Uh, I want a T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, know, you, you got it. Debbie Duhame's yeah. out there. A uh, Tom <laughs> Del Picaro will be with us momentarily, and. Uh,